I'm going to try and recount my trip to Jerusalem and the surrounding areas, which was in 2003. This is something I bought to wear on the trip over on the plane as a, as a shoulder shawl and sometimes a headscarf. What those are are little shells hanging. There were more shells, but as I was walking along, climbing here and there, they dropped off. So I have some souvenirs. There are many products over there that will have the English name on one side and it will be spelled out in Hebrew letters on the other side. So here's the English for Coca-Cola and here's the Hebrew on the other side. It's not a different word, it just says Coca-Cola, but you know, the same sounds, but in Hebrew letters. We stayed at the Mount Zion Hotel, which I recommend. There's, what, what they have the most of uh, in Jerusalem is stones and rocks. So the whole, that, that hotel is solid. Um, it's made with big stones. It's uh, beautiful. The, the individual rooms have very high ceilings. The windows have no screens. You don't really need them. Um, the sounds from outside the window. It's funny, I never heard the shofar, which I'll get to in a minute. I heard church bells frequently, and I heard the Islamic call to prayer frequently, but never the, uh, the shofar, which is the ibex horn that's sounded in synagogues and it's in the Hebrew scriptures also. I have one here. It's a large one. It's from the wild mountain goat, also called the ibex. Usually a man will sound this in a synagogue or at a special event, but I practiced for a long time and I sound this every, uh, every Friday late afternoon to welcome the, the Sabbath. Also on holidays, new moons, full moons, celebrations. Also in the scripture, it says to sound it every time you uh, take a trip. So <laughs> when I go to run my errands, I sound this. Uh, I wonder what the neighbors think. The dog doesn't mind it. In fact, I, I put this end near his snout because he seems to like smelling it. I guess it still smells like the animal. So let me uh, give you a demonstration. It's pretty easy. You just practice. Anyway. This cost, this I did not buy over there. I bought it here in uh, North Florida, actually at a Messianic congregation. I'm not Messianic anymore, I used to be. I am just Hebrew, which is in my DNA anyway. Anyway, this costs like $200 and it's very worth it. They have small ones, but you don't get the same sound. And some people who, who sound this, they cheat. You know what they do? They take a, a some kind of a mouthpiece and put it in there. Why? They're men. They should have the stronger lung capacity than I have. Anyway, I have one in the truck in case of emergency. When I lived on the farm and then I sold it, I still live there with the new owner there because he didn't live there. He just kept his animals there and he frequently had uh, cows and bulls there. So at the time he had four young young bulls and 
somehow, some way, one of his family members left the uh, the gate open, and they left. So the guy's father-in-law went driving around the neighborhood looking for them, and he saw them on the corner, like maybe a half a mile away, and he tried to get them back. I don't know what he did. And he came back to me in my cabin, and he said, well, what am I going to do? I saw the four the four bulls, and uh, and I can't get them back. And I told him, you're going to get in trouble with animal control. So, since those animals were used to constantly hearing me blow the shofar, I said, wait a minute. So I went and got it, the same one. And I sounded that thing a few times, and I waited. And in about two minutes, we see those four bulls running down the 600-foot driveway, <laughs> coming toward us. They remembered that sound, and they followed it. I mean, I guess that sound meant home to them. So the father-in-law, the new owner, said, keep blowing it, keep sounding it, keep going, don't stop. Because he had to get around them somehow and go close the gate in front. Anyway, that's my shofar story. So, what else? Here's another product. It's uh, Yo Play Yogurt. And actually, I don't, I don't see the English on this one. I just see, I just see the, the Hebrew letters. I don't know if this was sugar or coffee creamer. But I think we use the same stuff over here in this kind of packaging. Here is uh, some instant coffee, it looks like. Yeah, decaffeinated instant coffee. So here's the English side. And here's the Hebrew side. Here's a non-dairy creamer, English side. I know it seems silly, but I was fascinated by the English side and then the Hebrew side. <laughs> All right, I picked up some things off the ground. We took lots of walks. Um, this looks like some type of magnolia tree. I had a magnolia tree in the front in this house, but I had to have it chopped down because it dropped the leaves. It seems like 360 days a year it was dropping leaves. I don't know what this is from. I just picked it up over there as we were walking. You know, walking over there is not easy. I love to walk, but everything is a hill. It's so hilly. And it's very hot because besides just naturally being hot, it's closer to the sun. So it's high up. And well, these are just more things I picked up. And I have a little souvenir here. It used to be, before it broke, a uh, table napkin holder, but it broke. Anyway, it's the uh, Seven Light uh, Menorah replica that was in the Solomon's Temple. Now, here's some paper money. This one is worth 20 shekels. It's called, uh, a shekel is sing singular for the money. Shekelim is plural. Anyway, they're new shekels. They used to have old shekels. But this, this particular piece of paper is worth 20 shekels. Now, a shekel right now is about 28 cents in American money. When I was there, it was like a quarter. So let's just say a quarter so I can... Uh, um, calculate easier. And of course, whenever you need uh, Israeli money over there, you just go on a bank and you give them your charge card and they give you Israeli money in exchange. They also have coins. I don't think I have a... I don't think I have a... What do I have here? Okay, this one is worth um, 
five shekels, so that's this one's worth like a dollar. Hold on. The coins are so small. Look at this. Look how small it is. No, this is a shekel also. Yeah, this is a shekel also. I thought it was an agarot. It takes 100 agarot to make a shekel, so similar to our penny. But this thing is worth five, no, one shekel. So it's worth like a quarter. It's not smaller than an American quarter. Anyway, you can actually buy Israeli money on Amazon. But I think it's the kind you want to sell, you know, not sell, but save, you know, not really use. Because it would be a lot easier to just go to the bank once you get over there if you're visiting and have some American money uh, changed into Israeli money. I think I forgot to show this. This is pepper. Which in Hebrew is pilpel, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. So, what else? Um, we did not go over with a tour group because tour groups take you to where they want you to, to go. I wanted to see things as they really are. So, I did get to talk to some, some soldiers over there. And after a few minutes, they said, We're not allowed to talk to you. So, so we left. We were in a, a taxi cab once and we were let off right by the dung gate, which is um, the closest gate to the Western Wall. And I think I was taking my time too much getting out of the taxi because some some soldiers nearby with guns, of course, were, were saying, hurry up, hurry up, get out, get out, get out. Because whenever they see something unusual, like, you know, Somebody hanging around the taxi, like maybe they're trying to get some weapon out of the taxi. You know, it's just suspicious to them. Every most people over there are nervous, of course. Um, when we went in 2003, it was like the second intifada. So when we decided to go to a movie and see how a movie is over there, we were the only two people in the entire theater. Um, we took a few buses. We had to take a bus to Engedi to where the salt sea is. Um, that was very slippery walking over there. Um, I had to walk very slow. But it was just like a, a regular beach. Um, the water's very salty. It's easier to float. There were people covering themselves with mud. Some of them looked like they didn't ha hardly have any clothes on. Anyway, it wasn't too crowded then. Maybe, maybe because it was uh, intifada time. And, you know, everyone was nervous and afraid to go out of their house or something. Practically on every corner in, uh, in Old Jerusalem, because there's New Jerusalem and Old Jerusalem. And the Old Jerusalem is where you have the four quarters, like four neighborhoods. Um, you know, one is uh, the Jewish neighborhood, and the other one is the Armenian neighborhood, and then there's the Arabic side. And I forget what the, oh, the other one is the Christian side. And you walk through these winding streets. Uh, they're too small for a vehicle, so you have to walk. Anyway, um, there's this beautiful wall around the old city, which uh, an ancient Arab king built there. I think it was, yeah, Sultan, Sultan Suleiman. It's beautiful. And then there's the Eastern Gate, which is very close to the Mount of Olives. And that one is permanently closed. I think uh, some people are waiting for Messiah to come and enter through that special gate. So there's a lot of walking there. It's very hot. It'd be very good to uh, build up your muscles before you go over there. And beware, try to get to know what the money looks like because we were given a, a few counterfeit bills and coins, you know, when they gave us change. But uh, it's all part of the experience. 
I was talking to one lady who worked there in one of the uh, tourist exhibits. There's lots of museum type places to go to. And she said, uh, all the money that's sent over here from the United States is spent on weapons and limousines for, for government officials. That's what she told me. Anyway, um, there's plenty of friendly people over there. And you get used to seeing soldiers with guns, except, you know, in one hand they had a, some kind of a gun, you know, a big gun. Well, big gun? Some kind of automatic rifle or something. I don't know guns very well. And in the other hand, they had a cigarette. Everyone's smoking over there. It was amazing. So I don't know if they were thin because of all the walking up and down mountain mountains or if they were thin because they smoked. You even see people sitting right under a big no smoking sign like in a mall and they're smoking. It was amazing. The water there has a very high sulfur taste which I wasn't used to and I couldn't get used to it in a hurry. And I asked some young woman there, um, does everyone use bottled water here? And she said, no, we just drink this water and we're used to it. So, but I did buy bottled water over there, um, so you have to buy a lot of it with the heat. These stores over there are not like here in the United States. Uh, space seems to be at a premium. So there's little mom and pop shops. Uh, they're very crowded. Um, I think I found, found one uh, regular, well, regular, large grocery store like we have here, but I had to take a bus to it. And I did find one modern mall, they even had a food court, but that's another thing I had to take a bus to. Old Jerusalem is right next to New Jerusalem. In fact, the Mount Zion Hotel is in New Jerusalem, but it's just a, a short walk to Old Jerusalem. In fact, uh, from the Mount Zion Hotel, you could see the old city, including the Tower of David. Now that tower has nothing to do with King David, they just named it that, but it's, it's like a museum and uh, very interesting to go to. And what can I say, we went, I went to the Western Wall where people pray and something very beautiful there, there was this table, it looked like a kitchen table, and piled high on the table were books in all different languages you could imagine with prayers in them, so that people could pray in their own language when they go to the wall. And also some people write special prayers on little pieces of paper and they fold up the paper and put it in the, in the cracks of the stone wall. Anyway, there was a lady there and I found a prayer that I liked very much in English. And on the adjacent page, they had the, the prayer in Hebrew. So I asked the lady if she could say this special prayer that I like, if she could say it in Hebrew for me. So, goodness, it's very emotional. So she stood next to me and I was reading it to myself in English and she said the prayer uh, out loud in Hebrew. That was very really nice. Um, right in front of the Western Wall, there's a divider, so there's women on the right, and you see that would be the south, and there's men on the left, that would be the north. And when you're facing the wall, you're facing east. So right on the other side, you know, we're maybe two miles, which you could see very clearly is uh, Gethsemane, Mount of Olives. We went there also one evening, we found a cab driver who said he would explain everything to us there. And he was an Arab. He was very nice. And it was beautiful up there at night, the lights of the city. There's a large graveyard there on, on a hill <clears throat> between the Western Wall and Mount of Olives. And it was considered very special to be buried there. Even if they had to ship your body over from the United States or anywhere in the world, and it costs, at that time, it cost about $10,000 to be buried there in, in that cemetery near the Western Wall. 
I must be running out of room by now. What else can I say? It was a little bit nerve-wracking when we took one particular bus once, which was like very near the edge of the road, and if that bus fell off that road, it would be a long way down. And if it was prayer time, and somebody, a religious uh, Jewish person, happened to be on that bus, he would stand right up and, and say his prayers right there, right there in the bus. You know? And uh, we visited the, uh, let me see, there's a special church there. I forget the name of it. Um, I think like, it was Greek. No, there's some kind of an Arab family that throughout history has taken care of it um, for the Christians there. Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's something that when you read your Bible after you come home, and you read something, and you were there. It's much, much more special. When I read about um, the caves of Qumran, sometimes uh, you know I look up the information, what they found there, and, and I remember my bus ride to En Gedi to the Salt Sea. And when you're going there from Jerusalem, the Salt Sea is on your left, and and the caves of Qumran are on your right. So you remember it. It's how it's like a, a desert with the mountains and the rocks. And on the way back from the Salt Sea, where we spent a few hours, and, and we went in, of course, we were waiting quite a while, and it's very hot out there waiting for a bus. And we saw the bus coming in the distance, and it didn't stop. It didn't stop for us. It just went right on back to Jerusalem. Oof, the relative that was with me was so angry. But you know what? When finally the next bus came, we found out that uh, there was a bomb in Jerusalem. So we missed the bomb. There, there could have been us there. So uh, things happen for a reason. We shouldn't get aggravated. Sometimes we don't know the reason until uh, not just an hour after, but uh, decades after. Where else did we go? We went to this uh, this movie where they made the floor move up and down, so you could like have the experience whatever was happening in the movie. I didn't go to that section. I didn't want to get dizzy, but they have a lot of uh, interesting tourist attractions there. And I'll probably think of something else later that we did there. But um, right now, I can't think of it. Any questions, let me know. And at that time, in 2003, I think it, I think it cost us about $2,000. I don't remember if that was one for one person or two. I was uh, working at the time at uh, one of the health departments. And um, I don't fly anymore. We had to fly over there, of course. But every time there's turbulence, it's, it's just it's just terrifying to me. I flew a lot in my life, but uh, but no more. You know. Anyway, uh, I'll put all my souvenirs away and try to think of something else. I'll, I'll write it under the video.